Welcome to our channel, Behind My Story. Please like, share and subscribe. Some people live their lives not fully appreciating what others do for them. They start taking things for granted, thinking that that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Parents sacrifice a lot for their children, and when the children appreciate and try their best in life, that would be worth more than any words can ever describe. My name is Megan, and I hope to inspire you with my story. I lived with my father and my sister, Marlene, after the death of my mother, who died from an illness. Though I was only 18 at the time, I became responsible for taking care of the whole family. I did everything for them, cooking, cleaning, washing. My father was a great man, and he did his best to make us happy. I supported both my sister and my father. We faced everything together. There was one more person in my life, my neighbor, Dave. We practically grew up together, and our dreams grew with us. He knew everything about our circumstances and supported me often. He proposed to me and we got engaged. Dave chose a flat near my family so we would be close to them. That was very thoughtful of him. We got married and started our lives. I was determined to finish college and Dave helped me in every way that he could. He proved to me every day how responsible and considerate he was. One day, while cleaning the house, my heart started beating rapidly and I couldn't breathe well. I was barely able to call out to Dave who came immediately when he heard me cry for help. I had had this symptom before, when I was younger, but I never told my father, because I didn't want to worry him. Dave took me to the hospital, where a doctor said that I had a serious heart condition, and not just that, I was pregnant too. Pregnancy and a heart condition do not make a good combination, so we had to choose between the baby's life and mine. My father and Dave asked me to abort the child, though they tried really hard to persuade me. I resolutely refused. I agonized a lot during my pregnancy. They were all so worried for my safety. My father and Marlene left their flat to come and live with me, and Dave cut back on his working hours to stay with me. When the day came, they took me to the hospital. The doctor checked the condition and said that it was too serious, that I wouldn't be able to survive the childbirth. My family and I were shocked. I held Dave's hand and told him that I was strong enough to make it. Dave hugged me and cried. I was so afraid but I did my best to hide it. I said to my baby, I'm trying the best I can. I'm fighting so that both of us could have a life. Know that I love you, and I know that you'll grow up to be very successful, but you'll also be caring and kind. He was a dream, the future, or so I thought. But my love was cursed right from the start. Sounds a bit confusing, right? Let me explain. But first, I should probably introduce myself. I'm Carolyn. I was a dreamer. I dreamed of a good, warm, stable, successful life. I wanted a good job. And I wanted to travel around the world a bit with Helen. She was my best friend. We virtually shared the same dreams and hobbies and interests and lifestyles. We've been friends since we were kids. People often thought that we were sisters. I did too, in fact. She even got jealous if anyone tried to get close to me. Every day, Helen and I worked a little more towards our dreams. Once, when Helen and I were traveling with some of our friends, we had a problem with a hostess on the plane. A gentleman intervened and cleverly solved our problems. His name was Danny. I liked him. A lot. I thought about him often, but whenever I talked to Helen about him, she told me that he was not as amazing as I seemed to think he was. Coincidentally, I met him again at a party of a mutual friend. We talked together till daylight. I told Helen about her encounter, and she expressed her wishes that my love story would have a happy ending. I similarly told her that I hoped she would find the love of her life someday too. Everything would be okay, we figured. Then, one day, I received a letter in our mailbox. It was in weird handwriting, as if the writer had written it with a trembling hand. I opened it curiously. It said that my love for Danny would become a curse if I didn't give him up and get him out of my life. What nonsense, I thought. Whose idea of a silly joke was this? I immediately called Danny and Helen to tell them about the letter. Danny laughed, but Helen was worried and suggested that I should be careful from now on. That same day, Danny had a horrible car accident, but fortunately he wasn't hurt. A detective investigating the case determined that his car brakes had been tampered with. In another incident, a car almost hit me, but it swerved away at the last minute. When I mentioned this incident to Danny, he tried to calm me down and told me to just forget about it. 
he gave me a beautiful bracelet as a present and proposed. We got engaged, and I couldn't have been happier. I wanted to show the bracelet to Helen, but somehow I seemed to have lost it. I couldn't find it anywhere. Anyway, when I told Helen about his proposal, she was thrilled for me. I spent days shopping for just the right wedding dress. I was so busy with preparations that I forgot all about the ominous letter. I went to the wedding hall early to make sure that everything was ready and prepared. Helen was helping me, and Danny kept calling me to make sure I was all right. Suddenly, the lights went out. I called out to Helen, worried that she might have tripped and fallen when the lights were out. When the lights came back on, Helen had fainted, and my dress had disappeared. I screamed to the ceiling, What do you want from me? Leave me alone! Suddenly, Danny appeared out of nowhere and asked me what had happened. I told him, then and there, that we must break off our engagement, otherwise the curse the letter mentioned might injure someone or cause someone to die. Then Helen came too and tried to calm me down. She told me to go to the car and that she would get our stuff and follow me. I loved Danny and wanted to marry him, but now I was seriously worried that this curse threat might actually be real. Helen came back carrying a bag and a large suitcase and told Danny not to worry that she would drive me home and then call him to tell him that we had arrived safely. I was still crying and Helen was trying to calm me down. When we arrived home, I noticed something strange. Helen was carrying a bag that was partially open and I glimpsed a piece of clothing stuffed into it. It looked exactly like my dress. I opened the bag and found that it was my dress. I confronted Helen and demanded to know how my missing dress ended up in her bag. I clearly caught her red-handed, and she was unable to answer coherently. I realized at that moment that the source of the so-called curse was Helen. Helen, I said, how dare you do this to me? I thought we were like sisters to each other, she replied icily, with a glare that I saw for the first time. She said that she fell in love with Danny just as I did, but he chose me instead of her, and that she hated me for it. She said she won him over, and got him to love her instead. Then they both tried to scare me into calling off the wedding, so that she and Danny could be together. There are no words to describe how I felt at the time. I replied in a similar tone. I told her that I don't ever want to see her again or Danny. Neither of them mattered anymore. I never did see Helen or Danny after that day. I'm on a Caribbean island now, sipping on a cocktail. I read in the paper that Danny and Helen had announced their engagement. I'm thinking about what wedding present I should give them, as a surprise. Our feelings are always hard to control. We are humans, after all. Sometimes we do things we can't explain, just because we feel that way. I had a student named Daniel, a sweet and innocent child. I was prepared to do anything for him, but don't judge me just yet. First, let me tell you my story. My name is Jolene. I'm a 21-year-old math teacher at a primary school. I live with my sister and my mother. My house was next to the school where I work. I love teaching, and I like teaching the students in creative ways. They loved me, and I loved them. Daniel was a special student, though. Our story began at the start of the new year. It was the first day of school. I missed all my students over the summer break. I missed them so much that I stood by the door to welcome them back. Before I started my first lesson, Mr. Smith, the student affairs officer, knocked on the class door, with Daniel hiding behind his back. Mr. Smith greeted the class and asked them to greet Daniel, but Daniel was too shy and didn't move. So I went over to him to take him by the hand but he pulled his hand away, which embarrassed Mr. Smith. I asked him to greet his classmates, so he went and he stood in front of the class and he said, Hello, I am Daniel. Then he went and he sat at the very back of the class. He didn't talk much with the other kids. He didn't like to interact with anyone. Daniel always looked sad, and I thought to myself, He's only eight. What could possibly have made him that way? I tried to get close to him, but he resisted all my efforts. Sometimes he looked like he was hiding some big secret, and later on, I learned what it was. One night, when I was surfing the social media, I came across a horrible news story about a jealous husband killing his wife and another man right in front of his son. The child had been none other than my new student, Daniel. Reading that sad story, I started understanding why Daniel was acting that way. 
I decided to try brightening his life a little. Every day, I would buy a small present and put it on his desk. At first, it had no effect, but slowly he came to love that. During break time, I would sit beside him, and we would share food together. I would get him involved in class activities. On his birthday, I arranged a surprise party with his class, his grandmother, and myself. He was so happy that day. After the party, he hugged me and he told me that he loved me. I hugged him tightly. He was not just a student to me. I treated him like he was my own son. He told me that he wanted to call me mother, and that made me so happy. After his grandmother died, he came to live with me. We faced a lot of problems together, but I followed his success in life with pride. Daniel is all grown up now. He's graduating from the Faculty of Engineering. I am so proud of what he has made of himself. I adore my family. I adore our get-togethers, our joking around, our meals, everything. I can't imagine my life without them. But one day, I almost killed them all. No, I'm not insane, I assure you. So don't worry. I'll tell you what happened. My name is Ginger. I'm 18 years old. As you can see, I'm wearing an apron. This is because I love to cook. I like all things kitchen-related. My happiest moments are when I see my family eating a meal together. I always cook for them. They enjoy it too. And they support me. They let me try different dishes from different countries. I like to listen to their opinions about my cooking skills. I'm also addicted to cooking programs. One day, my cousin Charlotte came to visit, before Thanksgiving Day. She likes to dress all in black, and today was no exception. For some reason, she had called me earlier and asked me if I had ever heard of Thanksgiving's Day curse. I said no, of course, so she told me that the curse applied to large families who ate a big meal together on Thanksgiving. The curse was the result of an evil spirit named Vicky, who would possess the cook's body in some family's household and poison the whole family. She said that Vicky used to be a housewife who was a great cook and who loved her family, and yet she poisoned them all during Thanksgiving meal. She watched them die one by one, and then she killed herself as the grand finale. At first, I thought Charlotte was joking and trying to scare me, and I told her that it was nonsense, just an old wife's tale. But she said that every legend was usually based on facts. I paused for a second. That was partly true. I went to my room and searched the internet, and found the same information about the curse that she had relayed to me, which frightened me even more. Vicky was just like me. Or was it the opposite? I stopped myself from getting deeper into this. I needed to focus on preparing the meal. On Thanksgiving's Day, my father bought some groceries, which included a white bottle of liquid. I presumed it to be milk, though it smelled a little weird, but I thought it was my imagination. My aunt called and said she would be arriving a few minutes later, so I had to hurry and finish the meal quickly. My finishing touch was dessert. It was going to be pumpkin candy. I prepared it using the milk that Dad bought. After everyone had arrived, I served dinner. We all sat down and prayed before the meal. Then, everyone started eating. Things were going well. Everyone was chatting merrily and complimenting me on the food. I was overjoyed. But somehow, I couldn't shake this feeling that something was wrong. I looked at Charlotte, but she smiled supportively. Suddenly, one by one, the people around the table started clutching their stomachs and groaning in pain. The last thing I remember before I lost consciousness was my brother calling the ambulance. When I woke up later, I was lying in a hospital bed, alongside all my family members, who were also lying in the hospital bed. The doctor came in and reported happily that we would all be fine. Then he looked at me and winked. He also said, Next time, young lady, I suggest not using white paint in your cooking. And that was how I almost killed my loving family.